This video is part of my scam awareness series, and it's about scam emails that are a little bit more convincing than the norm. I thought about trying to fit this one into the Wham Bam That's a Scam series, but there's quite a bit to unpack here, so I'd like to take this one at a more reasonable pace. So here's the email. It's a request to review my contact details, supposedly from the Halifax, which is a well-known British bank. Just a quick point of clarity, there's nothing new about the scam itself here. It's just a phishing scam. It wants you to click on a suspicious link. That's as old as the hills. What's new about this, or at least new to me, is the quality of the scam email itself. The email reads, I hope this message finds you in good health and high spirits. Hello, Mike. Surname. Purpose of this communication. We trust this message reaches you in good spirits. In our efforts to improve our service, we are verifying the contact information of our valued customers. At present, we have recorded this mobile number as your primary contact. Should this be correct, there's no need for further steps. However, if adjustments are needed, kindly inform us at your earliest convenience. So, at face value, this email is supposed to be a routine message from my bank asking me to routinely confirm that the contact number they have for me is correct. It's very definitely a scam, and the way this works is that the number shown in the email is not actually my phone number. I, as the intended victim of the scam, am supposed to panic about the wrong contact details and click the button in the email to correct this supposed error. Now, I don't know who that number belongs to. Probably not the scammer, because I think their purpose is to make me click, not make a phone call. So that number could just be something randomly picked, and for this reason I did not try calling it. That might just be a nuisance to a completely innocent random person. And that's the same reason I've obscured part of the number in this screenshot. Unfortunately, I can't show you what happens when you do click on that link, because I was away from home when this arrived, and by the time I got back to a setup where I could comfortably and safely investigate it, the page was just a blank placeholder on a domain named SenseWest, which has nothing to do with the Halifax Bank. I am, however, reasonably confident in speculating that if I had clicked straight away, I would be met with a somewhat plausible-looking mock-up of the Halifax Bank website, that is, a phishing page, which would have a false login prompt, thus getting me to give away my login credentials, and probably also ask for confirmation of a load of other private information like address, date of birth, credit card numbers, and the like. Often at the end of the process for phishing pages like that, there's also a fake error message saying something went wrong, then a redirect to the genuine bank website to mislead unwary people into thinking they were there all along. Anyway, I said there were reasons why this email looked a bit more convincing than the usual scams. Let's look at those features. Firstly, it was addressed to me by my full name. In the subject line and the greeting line in the email, it addresses me by my first name and surname which is a little bit of a concern, as this is one of the features that some online services genuinely use as a measure of assurance that their email is authentic. Nextly, and similarly, there's this text at the top that says, to help you spot a genuine email from us, we'll always greet you with your title and last name, and we include part of your postcode. And the postcode fragment they gave here was indeed part of my genuine postcode. In case you're not familiar with UK postcodes, they are quite granular. A postcode usually identifies a fairly small number of properties, sometimes just a single property, sometimes a whole street. So it wasn't just a lucky guess. Well, I say it's my genuine postcode, it's actually the genuine postcode of the house I moved out of about a year ago. But if I hadn't moved house, this piece of information would ring true. Furthermore, it contains a plausible looking logo for the bank. This only shows up when I allow remote content and it's being served from the scam domain, not the bank itself. I would not normally allow my mail client to load remote content because there's a chance that even a remote image can have tracking metadata, which would confirm to the scammer that you read the email. I checked this before allowing it for this screenshot. Doesn't seem to have been any tracking angle here. And finally, the wording of the whole message, whilst it has some issues we'll look at in a moment, isn't so broken as to immediately raise suspicion. Not for everyone, anyway. It reads reasonably well. It also has some bump at the bottom of the message about credit limits, which again looks reasonably coherent. So there were four reasons why it looks maybe a little bit like a genuine message. And in particular, those two bits of identity information are leaning hard on subverting genuine security advice that has been handed out by banks and other online entities. But this is definitely a scam. And there are things that give it away as a scam without ever going as far as clicking on the link. These are, firstly, I don't even have an account with Halifax. The scammer isn't mistaken in thinking that I do have an account, they literally don't care. This email has been sent out in huge bulk to a vast number of targets, and the idea is that the people who are Halifax customers will select themselves to be scammed when they happen to receive it. Nextly, the sender isn't the Halifax. It's this Keith guy at a TalkTalk Talk email address. Or actually, that might just be the spoof from address. So that part is clearly wrong. It is possible for scammers to spoof or conceal that more convincingly, though, sometimes with alarming results that just shouldn't be technically possible. So whilst the wrong sender is a very clear red flag, the appearance of the right sender is not always a guarantee that the message is genuine. Furthermore, it arrived in a mailbox I don't use for online banking. In fact, this is an old mailbox I used to use for eBay. 
which is an interesting detail I'll speak more about in a moment. Finally, whilst I said the wording of the message isn't completely broken, there are some things that aren't quite right here, including, we trust this message reaches you in good spirits. Now, I'm not a Halifax customer, so I can't say for sure, but that seems a bit too informal to me. And the banner at the top says, I hope this message finds you in good health and high spirits, which is even worse. As I say, I can't guarantee that Halifax never uses language like this in their emails, but to me that reads like it was the result of an English as second language person googling how do you greet an English speaker in writing. Elsewhere, the language is just a little bit more flowery than I might have expected for a professional email from a bank. It's mostly subtle. We're verifying the contact number of our valued customers. Should this be correct? However, if adjustments are needed, kindly inform us at your earliest convenience. It's all just a bit unnecessarily embellished. Maybe I'm imagining it. And yeah, they did use the K word. No, 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 not that one. Kindly, which is generally considered archaic now, but is a feature of English that was commonplace in the British colonial period and thus retains popular use in former colonies of the British Empire, including India, Nigeria and some other African states and parts of Malaysia and other places. So that's all about the scam message. Two more things to talk about. How did this happen and what should we do? Now, you might be tempted to imagine that this scammer got hold of my name and other details through some carelessness on my part. And whilst nobody's perfect, including me, what actually happened here is that back in 2014, eBay had a serious data breach incident in which 145 million customer records were exposed, including names, emails and mailing addresses. That's how this scam was able to address me by name. That's why it arrived in the defunct mailbox that I used for eBay back in 2014. I am a little bit surprised that anyone's still trying to use that data now, nine years after the breach, but I suppose the scammers are figuring that a few people out of that list haven't moved house and haven't changed mailboxes and happen to be customers of Halifax. It might seem like a long shot, but when you consider the list has 145 million members, there are bound to be a few lucky hits in there. So what can we do about this? Well, that breaks into two categories, reaction and prevention. In terms of reaction, I've already discussed at length how this stood out as a scam, and honestly, I think we just need to be as vigilant as possible, as often as possible. There is no single factor, such as the sender looks right, or they dress me by name. There's no magic bullet to instantly determine that a message is what it claims to be. Unfortunately, at least in all of the cases where the message is asking you to do something important or urgent, you have to look at the whole thing very carefully. Starting from the assumption that it's probably fake, In a court of law, an accused person is innocent until proven guilty. Emails in your mailbox, I'm sorry, not sorry to say, it really ought to be the other way around. Guilty until proven innocent. And the standard of proof needs to be quite high. And if you do reach the point where you start to believe the message could be genuine, if at all possible, don't use the links in the message itself. So as a hypothetical Halifax customer receiving an email which was, let's say, a little bit more convincing than this one, the right thing to do would be still don't click that button, but go directly to your online banking using your own links or bookmarks, log in there and check your details. There are some exceptional real-world situations where you absolutely have no choice but to click a link in an email, but those are exceptions. The general rule, well, if you want my version of the general rule, is just don't click. And one more thing on the reactive side. If you can, report the email. I'm not a Halifax customer, and that made it a little bit difficult for me to figure out how to report this fake Halifax email, but I eventually found a mailbox where you can forward this stuff. Many banks and online services have them. I don't imagine reporting is always very effective, but it seems like the right thing to do on the off chance that it helps them either to shut down a scammer's phishing page or to provide relevant warnings to their customers. So report it if you can. Aside, but interestingly, here's the automated response I got when I reported this email. And whilst it does say that their genuine emails address you by name, which this scam did, They also say they never ask you to click through to your online banking. And I think they made the right choice there. So what about prevention? Well, short of never using any online services, there's no way to prevent your personal information getting stored in some company's database in their system. And after that, you're trusting their security measures for its safekeeping. And despite that eBay breach being nine years ago, that sort of incident can and still does happen today. Copies of your personal information can be breached or sometimes purposely misused by companies you trusted. I mean, choose who you trust is probably sensible advice, but unless you're going to go and live in a shack in the mountains, at some point you're going to share things like name and address and email with some companies. This also includes traditional mail order because your details are still going to be in a database somewhere. Sooner or later, some of your information is probably going to be breached. Preparation for that is more about what you will do when it happens rather than hoping it won't. One thing that's absolutely essential is never use the same password for more than one account. You've heard that advice before, no doubt, but yeah, different, completely unrelated passwords for different accounts. There's no point using a system where you have basically the same password everywhere, but just add eBay or Halifax on the end of it. 
A password system that's easy for you to work out when you need to type it is also easy for someone else to work out and abuse. In theory, companies should never be storing your password in plain text form, so a breach shouldn't reveal your password. But theory is not always the same as practice, and I have seen some horrific examples of badly designed customer information databases. One thing I do, and I realise this is a bit of a big ask, is use different mailboxes for different online services, at least for the important ones like bank and login to government services and such. I'm able to do that because I have my own domains, so I can create new separate mailboxes at will at my domain name, and in the case of things like the eBay breach, I can shut them down or divert them to a quarantine when they become unsafe to use. You can do something sort of similar in Gmail. If your email address is, for example, your name at gmail.com, you can give an email address of your name plus sign any text you like at gmail.com and it will still come through to your mailbox. Not quite the same as what I do because someone could look at that modified email and easily figure out the base email address, but it's better than nothing. An important part of any preparatory measure is keep it up to date. And as we've seen, advice and assurances about keeping you safe from scams can eventually fail and become false assurances, like the thing about addressing you by your real name. In terms of keeping up to date, I'm going to recommend a YouTuber called Theo Joe. He's really good at promptly reporting new kinds of scam or new angles for old scams. But the biggest area for preparation is your own mind. Prepare your understanding and accept the reality that scams exist, they're really common, and you will eventually encounter them. Prepare the habit of carefully and fully scrutinising any email that's asking you to do something important or urgent. Prepare your emotions not to panic just because it says it's urgent. Prepare your reflexes not to just click on something because it says you should. Prepare to be suspicious that emails are guilty until proven innocent. And prepare a little bit of scepticism to independently verify anything that at the end of all of this you start to think or worry might be a real message. Now, I'm not scaremongering here. You don't need to do these things out of fear. In point of fact, these things are a very effective antidote to fear. Don't be scared. Be prepared. I hope this has been useful. Thanks for watching. Stay safe from scams. And I hope to see you again soon. Mm -hmm.